everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And let me tell you something I am not passionate about. Sauvignon Blanc in California. I've been widely on the record saying that everybody in California should rip up their Sauvignon Blanc because it sucks and California just doesn't know what to do with Sauvignon Blanc. Though over the last year or so, I have been discovering more wines from California in the Sauvignon Blanc varietal that have appeased me, appealed to my palate. So maybe a couple years ago when I made that big statement, I was a little harsh. Today, the wonderful and elegant K. Murph, you think K. Murph will like that I call her elegant? That's good, right? Make sure she sees this clip. The elegant and wonderful K. Murph has picked three Sauvignon Blancs. I'm not quite sure where they are from, but I'm gonna guess one is from New Zealand. I'm gonna guess one is from Sancerre or Loire Valley. I'm gonna guess one is from K. Murph, K. Murph. South Africa. So that's my opening guesses. Um, I think you guys know the integrity of this show long enough and now we're almost at a thousand episodes that I have no idea where they are from. Though, I will not lie, I do see the screw top here so that makes me think new world. Uh, other than that, I'm excited to try them. Sauvignon Blanc, you guys should know, it's widely out there. It's a varietal that's probably underrated. And, and that's a funny thing to say. It gets dissed a lot. People piss, I, I want to say piss because it's cat piss as one of the adjectives to the wine. People piss on Sauvignon Blanc for New Zealand. It's like, oh, it's all the same, it stinks, eight bucks. I, I piss on, you know, California Sauvignon Blanc. Really the only Sauvignon Blanc that gets really any kind of attention or, or credit is Sancerre from the Loire Valley. I've been a fan of, of South African Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, Chile, at times, Casa Marin comes to mind as a producer that has produced some really good Sauvignon Blanc. But in general, it's a varietal that probably is underrated, underappreciated. People like the heavier Chardonnays. Then people, when they get to the lighter style, start looking things like Rieslings and they get nerdy. But it's continued to find a spot, a soft spot, in the American wine palette, and Sauvignon Blanc is still consumed at a high level. Let's go to wine numero uno. Sauvignon Blanc number one, nice zoom in, Mott, on the brown paper bag. You continue to impress me on your skills to zoom in on the brown paper bags. Uh, one thing Sauvignon Blanc lacks often is dark color. This one is light, you can definitely see your fingers through it. Heck, you can see through the table. I mean, this is a very light, crisp, clean wine. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. And the first thing that comes to mind is this may not be New Zealand, so the characteristics that make New Zealand really the king of Sauvignon Blanc lately over the last half decade to a decade is that grassy, tropical style. This is not that. This is much more classic. Um, there's even a little bit of like burnt smoke in the air. So smoky Sauvignon Blanc, which is interesting. I get a little banana peel. There's a little hint of pineapple. Let's give it a whirl. Some nice green fruit. Um, I kind of like, um, I like the elegance of this wine. Solid. I think it's like a 13 to 17. Um, clean. I get wonderful fig flavors on the finish here. It's got a nice long finish actually. Kiwi comes to mind. A little banana peel. Well executed Sauvignon Blanc. Very fresh. Tough to say does have some old world and new world characteristics. And I would struggle to peg where this is from. Though California comes to mind. Let's move on. Sauvignon Blanc number two. Deuce, as it's like to know. Let's go back here and just rinse. Big rinse. Little Jersey action in the background, I like that. Let's give this a little snippy sniff. Now this is interesting, this has a, a the, the original attack for me was like apricots meet papaya. Also not too, um, too grassy. I'm impressed, I mean, usually by this time, by the second brown paper bag, there's a lot of grass up my nose. I feel like, you know, bringing a lawnmower and, and attacking the nozzle. But this is not also, and this has a little stinkiness actually, believe it or not. Which is intriguing. There's also like a melon, uh, a cantaloupe component coming through here. Let's give it a whirl. There's some greenness on the palate. I kind of call this like, when I taste wines of this nature, I like them because it's got a little melon, it's got a little green grass. Not bad. 
good acidity, good structure. Um, a little thin in the mid palate, serviceable stuff. Um, I kind of like some of the nuanced flavors, um, but again, these are very light, crisp, clean, delicate, drink by themselves, porch, springtime. Mott, I don't know if you know this, but spring's gonna be here any minute. Well, you know it. I mean, life goes fast. It does. It goes, right? You agree. Absolutely. I mean, it's going, we're into year six of Wine Library TV, Brandon. Year six. Five full years of this show have been completed, Trouty. So it goes fast. These wines go fast. They're very light, crisp. You don't really remember them, but they're fun. They're like, you know, dating in college. All right, a little crisp, clean. This one's a little cloudier, a little heavier. So we're block number three. It's got a little bit more color. It's almost unfiltered. It's, uh, can you zoom in here? It's really kind of like cloudy, so it's an interesting little thing. Very different as well. I gotta be honest with you. Either my palate is having a difficult night or these Sauvignon Blancs are not atypical. They do smell like Sauvignon Blancs and they do come across, but this has, I mean, I, I'm definitely lacking that grass and green pepper thing that I like so much um, that is also so typical of the Royal. This has an incredibly thick and viscous nose. It smells to me like peach. Ma, do you know like when, the, you know, in the old country, my grandma used to do this, they would like put like real fruits and make like a fruit punch, but it was like thick. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, it's like, what's the almost, right word for it? syrupy? Not syrupy, but almost like tomato juice in texture, okay. right? So you know how you drink apple juice and orange juice and all that stuff in America, and it's all like produced and it's thin? Um, but then, pulpy. yeah, pulpy. Thank you, Trouty. You want to start coming in and uh, help me out? What's it? What's it called? Compote. It's like, right? Like that's like. I mean, it's a Russian word, but I think it's an English word too. Like compote of like fruit, like real stuff. This smells real to me, and that in itself is exciting. I get some really intriguing apricot. Um, um, what are those? Look? Yeah, those are apricots. Peachy. It smells great. This smells great. Let's give it a whirl. I didn't even spit it off. This is spectacular. This is definitely the Sauvignon Blanc of the show. This is actually one of the best Sauvignon Blancs I've had on Wine Library TV. I love the viscosity of this. This is thick. I can almost eat this Sauvignon Blanc. Now, I want to respect wines for what they should be. Sauvignon Blanc should be crisp and clean. And this is. But you can't deny its depth and structure. I love this wine, it's spectacular. And really, with all due respect, clowns the other two. Really beautiful tropical flavor, great mid-palate transition into a finish that is long, I still taste it. And right now, to be very honest with you, the only thing that's going through my mind, and I'm very excited. I got Brandon and Trouty, Mott's always here. Everything's very excited, and you know, I'm excited. I'm an excited character if you haven't heard. But I gotta tell you, the only thing that I can think of right now is I need some Kumamoto oysters because this wine is really being wasted in this format, except that I love that the Vayner Nation is gonna find out what it is in a second. So, let's organize this. Oh, wow, this is really good. I hope Cameron didn't give me like a non Sauvignon Blanc just for the ringer. In uh, last place, but still serviceable, I predicted it to be a $9 bottle of wine from the New World. I scored 86 points, is the Saracen Sauvignon Blanc 2009 from Marlboro, 89 points, Lisa Peretti Brown, who's now writing for Robert Parker's Wine Advocate, 20 bucks. As you can see, I believe this to be, my, zoom in here, get it, because it's full throttle. It's a pass, because this is double the price point that I predicted, and I'm not happy with it. A little anger to start the show, I'm not excited. Uh, wine number two, runner up, which was wine number one, which I gave 89 points to, and 13 bones. Thought it could be from even California, is, um, it, it is uh, French. It's a Pouille Fumé, Domaine de Bel Air, 2009, uh, uh, from Mallory uh, Galeries. This is a $17 Pouille Fumé from the Loire Valley, 17 bucks, 89 points, pretty good. I guess 13 to 17 bucks, my, for that. Little zoomy zoom there, not bad. Pegged the price range pretty well. Pretty interesting, I did say 13 to 17 bucks, guys, and it was 17 bucks. I didn't say 19, it was one of these round things. So let's respect the cred. And in last place, last, excuse me, in first place, wine number three, 
92 points. One of the highest scores I've ever given a Sauvignon Blanc on this show, I'm sure. Maybe the highest. Uh, to me, this acts like a $30 bottle of wine. It's that good. 92 points is, I'm excited here. Wow. A California Sauvignon Blanc. Humble pie is best served with some really good Sauvignon Blanc. And what we have here, wow, this is really, really good. Bevan Sellers, B-E-V-A-N, Sellers Sauvignon Blanc, 90 points Parker, 28 bucks. So though it is California, I, you know, to say this tastes like a $30 Sauvignon Blanc is out on a limb. How about that, Mott? That, uh, you know, I deserve that. For what I've done, you, you oh wow, a clap. No, no, this is, I deserve, I mean, I think California just cheered and spit on my face, put their collective California Nikes in my face and smeared me because they said, take that. I've talked a ton of trash. Though I did say at the beginning of the show, wait a minute, I want to say face here. I did say that I've been lately enjoying some California. So I'm like, this is really good, the Maria's Cuvée. I promise you, go out and find the Bevan Cellars, a Kirk Ranch, Sauvignon Blanc, Maria's Cuvée, 09. It is Phenomenal and one of the better Sauvignon Blancs that I've had from the New World in my life. Question of the day. When is the last time that you had to eat humble pie? You, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world.